Hi everyone, this is Coordination and Control Part 1, which is all about the role of nerves and hormones. Now nerves and hormones are the two different types of messages which are used in living things. And we're going to look at why they are necessary uh, and what they do. First of all, I've got here an example of a group of cells and some capillaries here from inside of a multicellular organism. Now, inside of a multicellular organism, cells are surrounded by tissue fluid, and this tissue fluid needs to have a relatively constant composition. And the sorts of factors that need to be constant inside of tissue fluid are the glucose level, the carbon dioxide level, the osmotic balance, temperature, and pH. So it's important that all of those things are kept constant for these cells to function correctly and the regulation of these things and keeping these things constant is controlled by nerves and hormones and it involves communications between organs and systems and as I've said the coordination of those things is controlled by nerves and hormones which is why they are important. Okay, so this slide's going to look closely now at hormones, which are one of the two types of messages used in a multicellular organism. First of all, hormones are chemical messages. They're secreted into the blood by endocrine glands, which are made up of these cells here. So this is a cell that's producing hormones, which are these little blue molecules here. Now, hormones are proteins. Therefore, they are produced inside of cells in protein synthesis. This cell secretes these hormones into the blood vessels. You can see here, this is a blood vessel. And hormones travel around the body in the blood. Now, a hormone will only have an effect on a specific cell known as a target cell. So this here is a target cell. This here is not a target cell. And what makes a target cell a target cell is the presence of these membrane receptors, which we know are proteins as well. And the way a membrane receptor works is if it has a complementary shape to the shape of the hormone molecule, the receptor will recognise the hormone molecule and the hormone molecule will produce a specific effect. And as you can see, this cell doesn't have any of those membrane receptors, so it's not able to detect the hormone message, and the hormone message will bypass the cell and move on to the ones that do have receptors and are, in fact, target cells. Okay, so that's important because due to the fact that hormones travel in the blood, the blood vessels come into contact with every cell in the body, and hormones don't necessarily want to produce an effect on every cell in the body, they only want to affect particular target cells. Okay, now the other examples that I've got over here are what happens when we have hormones that are water soluble. If a hormone is water soluble, the receptor will need to be in the membrane, which is just like the example we've looked at over here. Because it's water soluble, the hormone can't pass through the membrane. It needs to be detected by a membrane receptor. If the hormone is lipid soluble, it can pass through the lipid membrane of the cell and be detected by a cytoplasm receptor, which is a receptor inside of the cell. So they're the two examples. Water-soluble hormones, hormone can't pass through the membrane, has to be detected by a membrane receptor. Lipid-soluble hormones, the hormone can pass through the membrane and is detected by a receptor inside the cytoplasm. Okay, so let's summarise some of the key features about hormones. I'll just move these out the way. So, chemical messages that travel in the blood. That's a definition of a hormone. Because they travel in the blood, they're slow acting because the blood takes a while to make its way around the body. Hormone, the response to a hormone message is longer lasting. It can be widespread 
as I've said, because they travel in the blood, the blood reaches every cell in the body. So if the cells do have those target receptors, the response to a hormone message can be widespread. And hormones are involved in processes or controlling things like growth, reproduction, and blood glucose level. Three things that if you think about are reasonably slow responses we don't grow overnight it's a slow long process it's a long lasting process and it can be widespread or in other words occur in a range of different areas okay this slide focuses on nerves the other type of message uh, controlled by the nervous system i've got a diagram here of the central nervous system or cns it's made up of the brain the spinal cord, they're the two major components. And then you'll see all of these nerve networks and what you'll see about them is they reach every single part of the body. What I've got over here is two nerve cells and I've, I've got two because I wanna show you how they connect together and form a network or a pathway. And that makes up these nerve pathways that run through the body, made up of lots and lots and lots of these nerve cells all joined together. Okay, so some things about nerves. I will need to move these things out the way. Nerves are electrochemical impulses. So where we've just looked at hormones controlled by the endocrine system, Hormones are chemical messages. Nerves are electrochemical impulses. So it's that electrochemical nature that allows them to be really quick. Uh, they travel along nerve pathways. So an example of a nerve pathway is what we just looked at here. So a group of nerve cells all lined up in a chain makes a nerve pathway and along those nerve pathways are the electrochemical impulses that carry nerve messages. Okay, so nerve messages are fast acting. Because they're electrochemical, they happen very quickly. They're short lived. A response to a nerve message doesn't last very long, unlike hormones which are long lasting. And they're highly specific. The sorts of things that are controlled by nerve messages are highly specific things. For example, talking, which I'm doing right now, is being controlled by nerves. I'm specifically targeting my mouth and my vocal cords to make specific movements to produce specific sounds, and that's being controlled by nerve messages. Nerve messages are involved in, for example, blinking, avoiding danger and movement is a very obvious one they are examples of things that are controlled by nerve messages okay this final slide just summarizes the differences between nerve communication and hormone communication it looks at the pathway the type of message the site of action the speed of action and the duration so Nerve messages, the pathway is direct. It goes along the axon, which is that long, thin part of a nerve cell. Uh, whereas hormone messages are indirect because they go via the blood. They do a lap of the entire body and they don't go directly to the site of action. Nerve messages are electrochemical impulses, whereas hormone messages are simply chemical because they are protein molecules. Nerve messages are highly specific in their site of action. If I ask you to move your left index finger, you will only move your left index finger, which means it's being highly specific. The hormone message is, it, it can be specific due to the receptors in the target cells, but it can also have a widespread effect and affect more than one part of the body at once. It can target whole organs as well. Nerve messages are very fast in terms of their speed of action, whereas hormone messages are slower, and that's due to the fact that they need to travel through the blood, whereas nerve messages are electrochemical impulses that go directly to the site of action. So they're fast and hormones are slow. 
Nerve messages produce a response that is a short-term response. It's something that happens very quickly. And hormone messages produce a long-term response. So examples of those two things, uh, if you were to click your fingers, it's over as soon as it starts. That's controlled by nerves and that's short-term. Or growth is an example controlled by hormones. That's a long-term thing. It doesn't happen as quickly as clicking your fingers. Okay, that's the end of this video on nerves and hormones. Uh, for information on the stimulus response model, you need to watch the second video, Coordination and Control Part 2. Thanks for watching and see you next time.